Hi, my name's Bradley Gibbons and you join me here today on Lake Free at Royal Berkshire Fisheries. What we're going to be doing today is demonstrating some rod and line tactics on how to make the most of the fishing at this time of year. As you can see, it's a nice day here today, probably one of the first days of spring really. The sun's shining, birds are singing and uh, yeah, couldn't be more beautiful really. Lovely to be out on the bank. Uh, what we're going to be showing you is method feeder fishing and waggler fishing and how if you work both together and almost work one against the other you can make the most out of both lines. So to start my session today I'll always start on a feeder. Fish are on the feed now, it's warming up so method feeder is my go-to. The nice thing about a method feeder is it's delivering small morsels of bait right tight against the island and your hook bait is dead in the centre of it. So it ensures a quick bite when them fish are looking for food because that first mouthful they take often has your hook bait in. The other reason I'd always use a method feeder when fishing up against islands like this is mainly because you don't always know what you're fishing against. Fishing a conventional cage feeder or maggot feeder, your hook bait flows down through the water and it could land on or in anything. With the method feeder, with it sat on top of a flatbed, you can fish over sediment, fallen branches, rush beds, and you can always ensure that you've still got a chance of getting some bites. So with your method mix, you don't want it too dry and you also don't want it too wet. You see it a few times where people have their mixes too wet and they'll catch a fish, reel in, and there's still some method mix, some micros, some ground bait stuck in the feeder. That tells you that you've got your mix wrong. All I like to do is do them separately and then, like I said, I've got the two tubs. If I need to add a little bit more to make it a little bit drier, I can. You just want it so that it just comes out the mould, really. When you're doing it, do it so it just pushes into the mould, not too much pressure, and then just pop it straight out. Then when you cast out, you know that as soon as that hits the bottom, it can start to break down. We're fishing for quick bites, really. F1 fishing, we've got a chance of an odd carp in here as well. So we're fishing for a bite as soon as that feeder lands. Moving on to hook baits, I like to use wafters a lot on my feeder, so I use a lot of the dynamite wafters in 5mm or 7mm. In the winter, I think hook bait colour comes into it quite a lot. Sometimes a white hook bait in the winter will work 10 times better than a yellow or a pink. In the summer, I'm not as convinced. The water is very coloured. I don't think that they have time to say, I'm not going to eat that because that's yellow, or I'm not going to eat that because that's pink, or I will eat this because it's white. Some people will disagree with me, but in my personal opinion, I think the method, how you're fishing, and how tight you may cast may, pays way more into it than the colour of your hook bait. So providing that hook bait does what I want it to, sits just on the top of a feeder, which a wafter does, just so it's the first thing they suck in, that is all that matters to me. So the other tactic we're looking at today is waggler fishing and the reason I've decided to set a waggler up alongside my method feeder is purely because of the peg I'm fishing. I'm on peg 69 here on Lake Free today and we've got a nice open bay. Often this time of year the fish, even though they are getting on the feed, they can still be a bit wary and back off, especially in these pegs where they've got room to back off. So what I'd do is I'd have my waggler line in front of the bay and my feeder line at the back of the bay. Main thinking behind this is as the day progresses and I start catching a few fish on this waggler, it gives me two lines to bounce off and then fish will back off that waggler line when I catch a few and hopefully they will land on my feeder line. And then as the bites slow down on the waggler, I can drop on the feeder, catch a few on there. Often that will push them out the back of the bay, back to the front, and then it's just a cycle from then on. Just chopping and changing and just trying to make the most out of your peg. The main thing when fishing these two lines is just judging when it's time to change. So I'll fish this waggler and you might catch two or three fish quick on it because they've pushed off that feeder line. And then as soon as it slows up and you're almost chasing bites, that's when you've got to move. And it's just making them quick decisions, especially match fishing, for example, that can be the difference between maybe winning a section or winning the match. So we've had a really good day today, we've caught lots of fish, F1s, few carp mixed in amongst them. Bouncing between the two methods of a method feeder and a waggler has worked really well. To be fair, the method, it never really got going fully, but we managed to, every now and again when the waggler line died off, we could chuck the method out and just get a couple of bites and 
in a match, that extra few fish every now and again definitely pays dividends. So all in all, it's been a brilliant day, caught lots of fish. Hopefully this little video will help you on your local venue or if you're coming here to rural Berkshire uh, and just show that with a waggler and a method, it definitely improves your catch rate.